Going through adversity by Graham Cacho. First of all, what is adversity? According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, adversity is a state of continued difficulty or misfortune. Based on this definition, it's safe to assume that adversity involves pain and suffering of some kind, which is always unpleasant. But nevertheless, adversity is crucial because it molds us to continue advancing as individuals. For example, according to Natsika Majiba of the University of South Africa, adversity shapes character as well as resilience and is crucial to overall human growth. Without adversity, these things would never occur, and it gives us the urgency to continue improving as individuals. However, since adversity involves pain and suffering, it is often looked at with a negative connotation. In order to eradicate this negative connotation, I researched some of the most difficult types of adversity. More specifically, I researched how can adversity in the form of losing loved ones, being bullied, and having a near-death experience lead to individual growth. Now, before going further into detail about the specific types of adversity, I need to clarify that the point of my presentation is not to say that these types of adversity are beneficial for an individual, because they're not. They're terrible, horrible things that can happen to people. But rather, the point of my presentation is to inspire and give hope to people going through extreme hardship that they can grow through adversity, no matter how difficult it may be. So that being said, how can we grow, grow through loss? Well. According to Calhoun's team at the University of North Carolina, the loss of a loved one can lead to positive personal changes, such as increased self-confidence, increased appreciation of relationships, and growth in a religious belief. These things are helpful in day-to-day -day life, and without adversity, they would never occur. According to Michael M. Spears at Richmond University, the death of a close other results in an increase of death awareness. You might think that this increase in death awareness would lead to people becoming more afraid of death. However, as stated earlier, loss of loved ones could lead to an increase of confidence. And as stated by Chang at Southwest University, the only way to have confidence is by having courage. So loss wouldn't lead to an increased fear of death, but rather an increased love for the relationships you have with those who you care about. A key example of how growth through loss is possible is seen in the stimulus source, Eloise Cobell, A Small Measure of Justice. After learning that the Native Americans were suffering under the watch of the United States, Eloise Cobell, who is a Native American herself, decides to sue the United States government in hopes of, pro of providing justice for her family, or at least people she would consider to be family. Even though Cobell had to undergo the loss of her family, she was able to grow into an individual with the love, strength, and fight required to tackle the seemingly insurmountable task and provide justice for her family. And after fighting tirelessly and facing major adversity, Cobell was finally awarded with, quote, the largest government settlement ever awarded in the history of the United States. This is a key example of how growth through adversity is possible. So how is growth through bullying possible? According to Glover at the University of Nottingham, bullying can lead to an openness to growth within one's character. Being open to growth is a key trait that people need in day-to-day -day life because it increases our adaptability to change, and change happens often. This is seen throughout the Harry Potter book series as Draco Malfoy is constantly bullying Harry by calling him names and making fun of him. However, this only grew Harry's resilience, and was actually crucial to him defeating Voldemort, because he didn't let Voldemort's words get in his head. If he did, he would have been killed. Of course, in real life, people aren't fighting teleporting wizards with magical wands. However, the ideas still apply, because bullying can lead to a growth in resilience, and re resilience is crucial in day-to-day -day life. So how is growth through a near-death experience possible? According to Oxford Languages, a near-death experience is an unusual experience taking place on the brink of death. During near-death experiences, people often have significant religious encounters that inspire them to be better people. In fact, according to Bruce Grayson of the University of Virginia, during near -death, after near-death experience, it often influences people to become less selfish and more willing to help others. A key example of how growth through near-death experience is possible is seen in the stimulus source through the tunnel. Jerry was obsessed with completing a swim through the tunnel, and it was all that he could think about. After he finally committed to doing it and got close to completing his task, he was staring death right between the eyes. Quote, he felt he was dying. He was no longer quite conscious. He was struggling on in the darkness between lapses into unconsciousness. In this experience, in this moment, Jerry is having a near-death experience, which is a terrible thing that is happening to him. However, once he's able to get past this, it actually helped him grow into an individual with the closure and strength needed to move on from his extreme obsession. So what conclusions can we draw from this research? The first one is that adversity is easy to fear. This is because nobody likes going through difficult things. They can seem uh, scary and insurmountable. 
second one is that adversity can be tough, but it is possible to grow through it. As seen in each of my claims, adversity involves pain and suffering, but each also supplies us with countless opportunities where we can grow and improve as individuals. And the last one is that adversity should be looked at with a more positive connotation. All of my research points to the fact that adversity seems negative at the surface, which is why people reject it. However, it is actually crucial for us to continue improving as individuals. Now, of course, the types of adversity I mentioned are on the very extreme end of the spectrum, and they are horrible things, but this doesn't mean that we can't grow through them. And if you were to take one thing from my presentation, take the idea that sometimes good things can come from bad experiences. Thank you. Thank you, Fran. That was really good. So what evidence did you gather that you couldn't include, and why did you choose not to include it? Yeah, so um, I started researching um, effects that living in a toxic childhood environment could have on an individual. However, I decided not to include this because I couldn't even find one source that said anything about how growth through it is possible. And I wanted the point of my presentation to be inspiring and give hope and not be depressing. Very good. Okay, so um, how did you use the conclusions or questions of other people to advance your own research? So um, I actually watched a documentary in scripture class about near-death experiences and different people's experiences about them. And they talked about how they can have positive effects on an individual. And this conclusion inspired me to research further into detail about the effects near-death experiences can have on individuals and how growth through it is possible. Okay, thank you very much. You ready, Ms. John Trace? You'll be fine. Don't be nervous. Please don't be nervous, okay? I didn't time you, uh, Mr. Ketchum, but I think your time was fine. Can we stop the video? Hmm? Can we stop the video? Yes, please.